All right, so let's look at this example of interpreting a velocity versus time graph, right? So you're biking along a straight path. Based on the graph, describe your motion in words. All right, so let's do that first before we even read the rest. So here's our velocity versus time graph. Um, and we see here that for the first two seconds of our motion, we're moving in the positive direction, right? Because our velocity is positive. It's in the positive region of our coordinate system. Um, so let's assume forward is positive. So we're biking forward, and we are speeding up as we're doing that because our velocity is increasing over those two seconds. Um, and then once we reach a speed of two meters per second, and that's after we've traveled for two seconds, we coast at that speed for three seconds. Um, and after those three seconds, then we decide to, um, to start slowing down, All right? We see at the five second mark, we start, our speed starts becoming smaller, right? We're going from two meters per second to one to negative values, All right? So we start slowing down, but we're still moving forward because our velocity is still positive. So in this region here, um, up to the, six and a half second mark, um, we are still moving forward. Uh, moving forward but slowing down up to that point after 6.5 seconds from our original, from when we started moving, um, we stop moving just for a split moment, right? Our velocity is zero there. So we stop moving, but then we start moving negatively. So that means we start backpedaling and we have a really cool bike that's able to, to travel backwards. So we're traveling backwards um, up until we reach a speed, actually the same speed we had before, about two meters per second, but now in the backward direction, all right? So now we start coasting at that speed for two seconds, all right? And we stop measuring time after 10 seconds. Um, so we don't, we don't know the motion after that. Last we knew was we're traveling backwards at two meters per second. So there, we've described this in words. Great. Let's move on. Suppose you start at location of four meters in front of your house. At what position are you after 10 seconds? All right. So we want to, we know our initial position. We want to know our final position. So it'd be really convenient if we could determine the displacement, which we can because we're given a velocity versus time graph and we know the area of this graph will give us displacement. So notice in this problem, it tells us we want to know the position after 10 seconds. So that means for this problem, we want to know the displacement for the entirety of this graph. Some problems will not ask us for the whole thing. They may just want to know the displacement that we travel from zero to maybe 6.5 seconds. So then we just have to find the area of a certain part of the graph, not the whole thing. So just be careful with the problem states. All right, so let's figure this out. All right, so I've got here the velocity versus time graph, and we want to know the displacement for the whole area. So that would be this trapezoid here, as well as this partial kind of trapezoid under here. All right, it would have been more convenient if I had drawn um, a better graph than this, but whatever, we're gonna go with it. So to kind of find the area here, um, it's gonna be easy, easiest to kind of break this up into different parts, right? So we have this first region, which is this triangle. Um, and then we, so let's find the area of that triangle. All right, so area is one half base times height for a triangle, All right? Our base here, whoops, so we, have one half times our base of two seconds multiplied by our height of two meters per second. So two times two is four divided by two is two. And then units, seconds multiplied by meters per second gives us meters. So in that first region, we have a displacement of positive two meters. All right, so now let's break this up and the next region that's gonna be easy is breaking up into this rectangle here. All right, well, that's just gonna be base times height. Our base here is one, two, three seconds, multiplied by our height of two meters per second, 
giving us positive six meters. All right, so now let's do this triangle here. So that area is one half times our height again is two meters per second. Um, now base is kind of annoying number, uh, 1.5 seconds. So two times 1.5 gives us three meters. Uh, and then now we're dealing with negative quantities. So that'll be fun. Uh, so let's look at that triangle there. So that area has is one half our base, which is 1.5 seconds multiplied by, and I approximated that as um, a negative two meters per second. Um, I, maybe it's a little less, but let's approximate it that. Let's assume that I have drawn this a little bit better and wasn't rushing. <laughs> so we have a height of negative two meters, right? Because we're dealing with a negative direction here or negative velocity. Um, so that's going to equal the two and the two cancel. So that's negative 1.5 meters. And then our final region, what color should I use here? Ooh, let's go with rainbow. Oh, isn't that fun? All right, so that region there. So that area is going to be, well, that's a rectangle, so that's just base times height. Um, so that's going to be two seconds multiplied by our negative two meters per second. Um, I just realized up here I did the wrong units. Forgot the per second there. Nonetheless, this ends up being four meters. All right, so to find our total displacement for our 10 seconds, which is all these areas added together. So we have, um, so we have to sum the areas. So, ooh, what did I just write? So I just wrote the um, Greek letter capital sigma. Uh, you might be familiar with math class, just means sum. We'll get more into that notation later. But it means I'm adding up all the areas. So you have 2 plus 6 plus 3, 8, 9, 10, 11, minus 4, 7, minus 1.5, gives us 5.5 meters. So we have displaced a positive 5.5 meters. So if I go back to our prompt, um, we started at a location of 4 meters um, and we displace a positive 5.5 meters. So that means after the whole 10 seconds, we're at a total amount of 9.5 meters from the front of our house. All right. So great. Next part, during which spans of time are you accelerating? Well, looking at our velocity versus time graph, we know it, we're accelerating any times that our velocity is changing. Well, our velocity is changing in the first two seconds. We have a positive acceleration there because our velocity is getting more and more positive. Um, then we have a region, so this region here, no acceleration from the two to five second mark. Then we are accelerating again. Our velocity is changing from the five second mark to the eight second mark. We have a constant acceleration in that region because our graph has a constant slope and it is a negative acceleration. And then we're no longer accelerating from eight to 10 seconds. Our velocity is not changing. In which span of time is your speed changing the most? All right, our speed's gonna be changing the most when the slope of our graph is the steepest. Um, and looking here, our graph has the steepest slope. Let's see. Well, in this first region, we go up two units and over two units. Whereas in this slope over here, we go down four units and over one, two, three units. So this region here, um, we actually are have um, the greatest change in speed because the magnitude of the acceleration is larger in this region than this region over here. 
All right, so I hope that was helpful in kind of interpreting a velocity versus time graph. Um, and thanks for, for watching.